Well, good morning. Good morning. That's pretty good. I let I let that slide this morning. I was asking them back in the back if uh, if they would help me move this to kind of get a little bit closer to where everybody's at down there. But it looks like this side, y'all, y'all are doing pretty good. So I may just have to stand over here. Um, but uh, this morning also, I'm going to need a little help. We um, our clock has quit on us back there. So if I get too long winded, somebody do this. And but I'm going to try to keep my um, I've got my I've got my my phone with with my clock on, and I'll try to keep track of things. Brother Simpson will keep me on track back there too, so we should be in good shape. But we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. And open up with a word of prayer. So if y'all don't care, stand with me. All right, let's all pray together. Father, we come this morning and just uh, thank you so much for the many blessings you've given each one of us and all the many things you've put in our lives, Father. We're just going to ask you this morning to uh, be with our service today and just help us to uh, glorify you today, Father. Help us to uh, lift up one another, Father. We're going to ask that you be with those that are sick today, Father, those that we prayed for in the back that are, are facing upcoming surgeries this week, Father, that, are, uh, that, that just are dealing with the loss of loved ones, Father, and those that are just dealing with all many different diseases and problems, Father. Father, we're going to ask that you help them today, Father. We're going to ask that you be with each of us and unstop our ears today, Father. Just open our eyes so that we can uh, hear you and we can see you today, Father. That we can uh, respond to your word. And we're just going to ask for your guidance and your blessing on this choir today, Father. On our singers today. And we're just going to ask that you help us all to glorify you. Not just today, but every day. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. morning, if you don't care, turn to page 41. I, I don't know if that's in, is that in the hymnal or the, okay, in the hymnal. <laughs> Six, leaning on the everlasting arm.
receive our offering this morning. Brother Roy is going to come sing for us. And let's see, I've got Caden Jones, get up here. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> they, they, no, you need to stick around too. We only got two of them. All right. All right. Yeah, we got to get, we got to keep these youth awake. They, they've been gone all weekend at TNT. They're all wore out. So you got to get them going this morning. Brother Neil, bless our offering if you don't care.
David said he's like a shepherd he knows our every need leads us by the gentle water where our hungering souls he feeds as a little lamb i'm helpless my soul i can't defend i'm so glad the lord's my shepherd on him i will depend oh it's in the savior's hands those precious nail-scarred hands though driven through with nails those precious hands they'll never fail i may not understand i'm trusting in the great i am it's good to know it's in the savior's hands now in the time of my confusion when i can't find the way so bewildered from the battle don't even know for what to pray i'm glad that somewhere in the shadows of my troubles and my fear it's the shepherd sent from heaven i can see him through my tears oh it's in the savior's hands those precious nail scarred hands though driven through with nails those precious hands they'll never fail i may not understand i'm trusting in the great i am it's good to know it's in the savior's hands oh i may not understand though i'm trusting in the great i am it's good to know it's in the safe yours hands. <clears throat> this is what heaven means to me. When I think of heaven, and oh, quite often I do, now I may not think of the things that seem so very close to some of you, like the walls of jasper, or the gates of pearl, or the mansion standing everywhere on solid streets of gold, because these things, they don't appeal to me or fill my heart with bliss because I've never had enough of these things to get me spoiled I guess all oh, but uh, our human minds will never be able to comprehend the beauty there is to see and this my friend is what heaven really means to me well it's a place where all night has vanished away in the ages of time it's just one long day while the weather it'll be perfect and the food it'll be fine and praise God we won't ever have to hurry because there's not gonna be any more time while we won't ever cry because there's no bills to pay or nothing to buy and there's not gonna be any more sorrow not one little bit of sin and the sting of death, well, we'll never feel it again. Oh, and another thing that's going to make heaven so fair is my mom and dad. And I know they're both going to be there. And they're going to look so young and fair, I see. Not old and wrinkled like they used to be. And I'm going to kiss my mother and she's going to whisper in my ear, we've been waiting for you and we're so glad you're here 
my daddy, he's going to say, there's no more fear. And we're going to sit down and talk for maybe a, a thousand years. And just imagine, if you can, getting to see the old saints and shaking their hands and listening to the stories of the things that they've done and, or maybe even living right next door to old James or John. Well, it's going to be wonderful when we make it through to that home I know God is preparing for me and for you. But all these things I've mentioned, they won't even compare to the greatest thrill that awaits me when I get there. And that's to see my Jesus, the one who died for me, and to live in his precious presence forever. Well, I don't know about you all, but I'm going to sing forever without a trouble or a care. Now that's what heaven means to me. Oh, and I hope and pray that I get to see every one of you there. We got one more thing to do before we uh, dismiss our kids to Children's Church. And uh, Tom Miller, you thought you was going to get away with it, but you didn't. It's Tom's birthday. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Tom. Um, we had a couple others that aren't here this morning. But it was also Patty Pumphrey. Yeah, so Patty Pumphrey. Uh, she sends everybody's card, so if we could yeah. somebody send her a card this week, I'm going to try to send her one too. Everybody send her a card. Wish, wish her a happy birthday because she, she does a good job sending everybody else cards. Uh, all right, so y'all sing now. Oh, happy right. birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you feel Jesus near. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, and the best year you've ever had. All right, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and let our kids go back to Children's Church. My wife's going to take them back this morning, so anybody wants to go, you all just follow her. And the rest of you, if you don't care, turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 14. Uh, we're going to be um, in a very familiar place this morning. I have um, preached in Exodus chapter 14 probably, I don't know, two or th at least two or three times uh, but this is, uh, this is always one of my favorite scriptures to preach from, and every time the Lord gives me an opportunity, I take it. Um, because I love, um, I love Exodus 14. And if you're not familiar with Exodus 14, it is um, the chapter where the Israelites have, have left Egypt, and they are at the Red Sea. And it's, it's that chapter where, and we know what, we, we have all the plagues that happen, and then we've got Pharaoh who, uh, who says, you know, get out of here. Y'all, y'all. You basically, you're destroying my country. Get out of here. And so they leave, and they're on their way. Then he changes his mind and, and says, no, we're going to go get them. We're going to put them in slavery, and things are just going to be the way that they were. And, and we know that, it, that he sends his army out, and they're, and they're chasing these Israelites, and they're, and they're on their heels. And then we're at this point where they, they come up to the Red Sea, and they don't have anywhere to go. Because they've got Pharaoh's army back here um, coming up behind them and surround them, and they've got the Red Sea in front of them, and there's nowhere to go. And I, I love what happens here because this is just a, one example that God gives um, for the children of Israel, how He will care for them. And it's also an example of how He gives us how He will take care of us, how God will deliver us. And, and, but when we, if we just kind of leave it at that point and we just kind of um, stop at that point, we kind of miss out some of this. And that's what we're going to get into uh, this morning. We're going to kind of look at the whole story there from the time that they're at the Red Sea going just a little bit further. And we're going to hopefully, um, hopefully bring some things out. And then, uh, and, and then tonight we're going to look at, in, in, the, in the book of Psalms a little bit. I thought I was going to be able to do both of those this morning, but it just it ain't going to work out because there just isn't enough time and there's just too much going on in order to... Be 
be able to look at this. But there's a couple of things I want us to keep in mind as we go through this. The first thing is that we don't need to be sit, we, sitting around paralyzed by all the things that are going on in the world. We don't need to kind of uh, be, be in shock or in awe about everything that's going on in our world. And, and, because, and because we need to be making decisions that we're going to follow God, that we're going to follow Christ. We need to be making the decisions that, that are going to change our lives and are going to change the direction that we go in. And another thing that we need to keep in mind is that we don't have an infinite amount of time here. That time is precious and time's moving forward and time is going on uh, uh, day after day, you know, and moment after moment. That's kind of that's what we talked about last week. We talked about how time does not stand still. That time will continue to move forward. That we cannot go back and change anything that's happened in the past. That's over with. Then we can't go forward and look into the future of what's going to happen because it's not happened yet. But what we have to do is we have to live in the moment of where God has placed us right now. And we have to make the decisions that are necessary so that will impact our future, that, but that we have a positive impact on it. And what we're going to look in this morning, is we're going to kind of look at how now is it, it's time to act. It's time to stop just sitting around, looking around, and thinking that things are just going to kind of magically take care of themselves. But it's time for God's people to stand up and for them to act for them to act on what God has called them to be and for them to act on what God has called them to do. It's time for us to act. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. So, I think I covered everything. Well, all right, we'll go home now. <laughs> Stand with me. I'm going to read Exodus chapter 14. I'm going to read three verses, verses 15 through 18, and we'll get into it this morning. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15 says this. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. It says the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Father, we come once more and I just thank you for this time. I thank you for our, our singing this morning. And I thank you for our worship and our ability to worship. Our willingness to worship today, Father. I'm going to ask you to anoint this word today and just to, and, and to let it resonate with each and every one of us, Father. Help us to stand on what you have given us. Help us to stand on our faith today, Father. And help us to respond to your word. Guide me today, Father, and give me the words to speak, I pray. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. So, as I, the, what I read there, like I said, it's a, it's a familiar passage. Um, and, and particularly, you know, if you've, uh, if you've been around long enough to, to, to hear me preach this two or three times. Um, and, there, you know, once you preach it two or three times, there's not a whole lot of new things that come out of it. But it, it's just reiterating what God is trying to tell us. And what God's trying to reveal to us. And, and like I said, we're at this point where they're right there at the edge of the Red Sea. They need something to happen. They need something to go on. And they are absolutely scared to death. They've been murmuring and complaining and doing what, all these different things. And, but they need God to move. And that's one reason I love these verses. Uh, verses 13 and 14 are my favorite. Because they say this, it says, Moses answered the people. He says, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the, that the Lord will bring you today. And the King James says it much better. It says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because that's what it is. It is the salvation of God. It's not man's salvation. It's not my salvation. It is God's salvation and God's deliverance from whatever enemy that we're facing is what he's talking about. But he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He says, uh, he says the Egyptians you see today, you will never see them again. He says, the Lord will fight for you and you need only to be still. Man, that is encouraging, isn't it? Because it tells us that nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is too hard for God to do. Absolutely nothing. There is nowhere that God isn't. There is nobody who can defeat God. All we have to do is to trust in God. All we have to do is to put our faith in God. All we have to do is stand still and see God move. Because there is going to come a time that, that we're going to be in that place that we can't go anywhere. And God doesn't say run away and go home, does He? God doesn't say go back into bondage, does He? 
God says, stand still. God will never tell us to retreat and to back down. Because God is on the move. But He says, when you can't go forward, just stand still. Stand still and watch what happens. And He says, the Lord will fight for us. We need only to stand still. And even if we can do that, if we can just stand and wait on God to move, if we can stand and allow God to move, then it won't overcome us. It'll get hard. It'll get tough. But it won't overcome us. It won't defeat us. Nothing on this earth can defeat the child of God. Nothing. Because we have... The power of God behind us. We've got the power of God influencing us. We've got the power of God covering us, overshadowing us. That's the promise of God. But like I said, there's more to this. There's more to what's going on here. Because here they are. They're at the Red Sea. God tells Moses, tell them just to stand still and watch me work. And that's great. That's great news. But if we stop right there, if we just end right there, say, all right, we're good. Yoo-hoo! We have our strength. We've got our encouragement. We've got our hope. But we also have a tendency to become lazy and complacent. Spoiled. I had to make sure I wrote that in my notes. We become spoiled. You're like, huh? What are you talking about? Why? Why? Well, here's the thing. We've become so dependent on God for absolutely every little bitty thing that we become like infants. And I don't know, well, aren't we supposed to depend on God for everything? Yes, we are. But here's what we do. God will say, all right, I have done this. I have taken care of this. This is what I want you to do. And we don't hear that part of it. What we do is we, we say, oh, well, that's bad out there. Let's we'll see what God's going to do. And we do nothing. But God wants us to move. God wants us to do something. God wants us to move forward. God does not want us just to stand around looking around, saying, well, what's going to happen? We're, what, what, what's going to do? God is trying to... Help us. God is trying to mature us. God is trying to have us grow up. To grow in our faith, our knowledge, to, or for our relationship with Him to grow. So when we're faced with these things, God is revealing, God is making a way, God is making a pathway, but God is also telling us what He wants us to do along that pathway. And there's going to be times when we run up against something that, 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 that God has allowed to be there and we just have to stop. And then it's at that point that we just get out of the way and God does what God does. But the vast majority of the time, God says, all right, I have prepared this pathway, I have prepared this way. I want you to walk down this road and I want you to learn all these things from this. And I will guide you. I will direct you. I will show you the way and I will lead you through it. But we don't want to do that. We're like babes tossed to and fro. I'm going to read it to you. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 says this, Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. He says, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Him who is the head, that is Christ. And then Paul says it again in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He says, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, merely infants in Christ. He says, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. He says, Indeed, you are still not ready. And then Hebrews. Whether you believe Paul wrote it or somebody else, this is what it says. It says, We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. That's one reason I think Paul may have had a hand in this, because he, you are slow to learn. That's kind of say, 
You're being ignorant is what he's saying. He said, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk being still infant is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness, but solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. And that's the message that God has been trying to tell the church for 2,000 years. He's saying it's time to grow up. It's time to mature in that relationship. It's time to get off the milk and get onto the meat. The milk is for the young. The milk is for the babes in Christ. But we need to be mature. We need to be aware of all the things going on. We need to be able to stand firm. We need to be able to stand in the face of demons and say, by the power of God, I command you to shut up and get out. That's the power that we need. That's the power we need to be able to tap into. That's not just the power for just Christendom. That's the power for this church that we need to be in. We need to grow up, church, to grow in the faith, every one of us, because the challenges are going to get harder. The days are going to get longer. And we need to be able to handle it. We need to have that mature relationship with Christ. And that's exactly... What God is telling Moses here. Look in uh, Exodus 14, verse 15. He says this. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. He's saying, Why are you standing around, looking around? He says, I have told you. He said, Now it's time to move forward, to move on, to go forward, to walk out in faith. Take the path. I wonder, what path has God set for each one of you this morning? Maybe the path is that you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If that's the path that you have before you this morning, then do it. Maybe you need to repent of your backsliding. Do it. Maybe God is calling you into some type of new avenue, new ministry, new direction. Do it. Whatever it is, just do it. We ain't selling Nikes, but we need to just do what God has told us to do. We need to do what God has called us to do. We need to have the faith in God that He will lead us, that it's God driving the bus, if you will, that God's directing us. All of us are called to deliver the message of Jesus Christ to this world, and we need to do it. We need to be delivering that message, that message of hope. Because time is short. Time is short for us and time is short for this world. And we need to act on it. We need to act on what God has called us to do. Whatever that is, we need to act on it. Like I said, God will provide a way. I want to show you here. Exodus chapter 14 verse 16 says this. He says, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so they will go in after them and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army and through his chariots and his horsemen. And then in verse 18 it says, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. God tells Moses, this is exactly what I want you to do. He says, when it's time, I want you to raise your hands, raise your staff. He says, I will part this sea. Your people will go across on dry land. He says, these Egyptians, they're going to follow you. He said, but they ain't going to make it. But they will know that I am God. They will know who God is. And when the church will stand up and do what God has called them to do, this evil world will know who God is. This evil world will have no no choice but to respond to God. Whether they accept Him or whether they reject Him, they have to respond. But as long as we kind of cover ourselves up and, and herd ourselves in and not expose ourselves to this world, then they will know nothing. They're not going to know unless somebody tells them. And that nobody's going to tell them unless those who are sent go and do what God's called them to do. God sets it up here. He tells them. And then He sets it up. Verse 19. 
He says, Then the angel of God who has been traveling in front of Israel's army. Look what he does. The angel of God who has been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. It says, A pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. He says, Throughout the night the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side, so neither went near to the other all night long. Imagine that. They have this cloud and this fire that's been leading them all this way. They come to the Red Sea and all of a sudden it goes from in front of them to behind them and creates a barrier between them and the Egyptians. On the Egyptian side, it's complete darkness. They can't see a thing. On Israel's side, they can see everything. God has made that barrier for them. God is making a barrier between us and the evil of this world. God will protect you from it. God will deliver you from it. Then in verse 21, God has everything in place. They're ready to go. It says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. He says, The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. God split the sea. And people will say, oh, that's just a story, that's just a myth. Or they'll try to make up all these different things. That was a miracle of God. He delivered these people. He split the sea left and right. Made the ground dry. Anybody ever been out in a, in a, in a creek that's just now dried up? How muddy it is? Anybody ever been out in a river? It don't just dry up just like that, does it? He dried it up and they walked across. Every one of them. And it stayed that way until every one of them, a million plus Jews, went across that sea. And it was dry. But as soon as the Egyptians gave chase, here, I was, going to, I was just going to summarize. I'll read it here. It's, it's good. Verse 23. If I can see it, my eyes are getting bad. I'm getting old. It says, The Egyptians pursued them, and all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. It says, During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud and, and, and the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off. It says, so they had difficulty driving. Also the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them and against Israel. They knew the wheels started falling off. The, what, the land got muddy again. They, got, they were getting stuck. They were in all chaos and confusion. He says, then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back into its place. It says the Egyptians were fleeing toward it and the Lord swept them in the sea. It says the water flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen and the entire army of Pharaoh that followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. It says, but the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and on their left. It says, that day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power of the, that the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in Him and in Moses, their servant. What power of God do you need to see in order to put your faith in Him? God has revealed Himself to you so many times, but you need to put your faith in Him today. Whatever's holding you back, you need to let it go and put your faith in Jesus Christ. Because that is the only hope you have. Like I said when I started, it is time to act. Every one of us need to act in some way. What's God choosing you for this morning? What's God calling you to this morning? Maybe God is revealing your sin and saying, you need to come and repent. You need to give your heart to Jesus. Maybe that's what God's saying to you this morning. Maybe God is saying, you have wandered from me. You have went your own way. I need you to come home. Is that you? Is that what God's saying to you? If it is, you need to respond. Maybe God is saying, I've got this lined out for you to take a role in. I've got a job for you. 
What's your response going to be? Because here's the thing. Here's the thing with that. We have plenty of time. We will respond to God one way or the other. By simply sitting and doing nothing, you are rejecting God. If God, if the Holy Spirit is putting something on your heart and is calling you to something and you do nothing about it, you are rejecting God's call. You're rejecting it, plain and simple. And if you continue to reject it, that call one day may not come. That call may stop. Don't take that chance. If God is calling you to respond, respond. Stand with me if you don't care. I think Roy's going to come and sing or somebody... It's no mistake that you're here this morning. It's no mistake that you heard this message this morning. It's the Word of God, straight out of the Bible. It's your choice what you do with it. Whether you leave out of here and just say, oh, well, that was good, bad, ugly, whatever, and just go about doing your own thing, or whether you respond. Because the only way your life is any different when you leave here than when you came in is if you respond to God, if you respond to the Holy Spirit. It's the only way. Any other thing, you're just going to leave the same way you came. So it's up to you. Whatever God has called you to do, I would invite you. I would beg you to come and respond to God. Not to me, but to God. So they're going to sing and you're going to have that opportunity. Page 343.
Anybody got anything to say or do before we're dismissed? I got a few announcements. Uh, men's group tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. If I'm not there by 7, somebody call me and remind me. Um, Thursday at 7 o'clock down at the Fellowship Hall, um, we're going to have an informational meeting about um, recovery, Celebrate Recovery. It's a, it's, we can't call it that because we're going to do things just a tad bit different, but it's a Celebrate Recovery type program that we're going to try to get started, but we're going to have an informational meeting at 7 o'clock. We'll have some snacks and things, so um, we should have a good time. Our Valentine's Banquet, Monday night, February 15th, 6 o'clock at the Kentucky Depot. We have confirmed our, reg- our reservations for that. Our midwinter retreat, we got email about that. It's February 26th through 27th, again at Cave City. It's $35 per person plus room. Um, of course, choir practice tonight, 515, every Sunday. Tax forms, Rhonda's got those if anybody needs to get those. And then the, the one I really, really wanted to get to is I opened the mail the other day and we had our, um, had our little um, payment th- book for our fellowship hall. And our balance is, you know, drum roll, <laughs> $3,922.82. Amen. So, thank you all. We are getting there. It won't be long we'll have that thing paid off. And, and we can move forward with the next thing. Another thing, um, our youth did go to TNT this past week, and I've not had time to talk to Neil and Dennis about what, what all went on, but I, it was my understanding that, uh, that, that how many of them got chose to go to Nashville? Just about all of them. Just about all of them, so... They represented the church and well, and I'm assuming they mind their P's and Q's because our youth always do. Yeah. So they're wore out. Um, but they will be, um, I, am, I am assuming they will be doing some fundraising um, because it's going to probably take, it'll take uh, probably over $3,000 probably for all of them to, to go to because that one's in Nashville. So um, be in prayer for them and, uh, and start gathering your change up and, uh, and get, get ready for some candy bars. So. Uh, all right, anything else before we're dismissed? All right. Brother Eddie, you care to dismiss us this morning?